Hello, my name is Teresa Cafesi, and I'm a criminal pr defense practitioner. I went into private practice in 2011, and before entering private practice, I was the chief attorney for the San Francisco Public Defender's Office, where I began my career in criminal defense and learned how to win before you begin. That's going to be the subject matter of our program here at the State Bar Conference on Sunday. So your case is not going to settle. You've got a trial date. You've reviewed all your police reports, the case files. You've reviewed the witness statements. If you're a criminal defense law the defense lawyer, you've gone over the evidence with your uh, client. And now it's that component time in the case where you're set to do your motions in limine. There are many components to a jury trial, but the motions in limine are an important part of the process. So what is a motion in limine? A motion in limine is a request by either party in a case to have the judge rule on an evidentiary issue that tends to be of a sensitive nature. The eliminate motion is always outside of the presence of the jury. It should be made in writing with points and authorities that substantiate your position and the basis for the granting of your motion. The purpose of the motion in limine is to preclude the presentation of evidence that is inadmissible. Most generally, it's evidence that one party or the other thinks is too prejudicial for the jury to consider as, it, as the trier of fact in your jury trial. A typical order uh, involving a motion limine will be to exclude the challenged evidence and the court, the trial judge, will direct the party and the witnesses not to make any reference to the excluded evidence during the trial. Now, this procedure seeks to avoid the very futile attempt to unring the bell in the event that sensitive evidence or that evidence that you wanted excluded as the moving party gets admitted to the jury without having made the motion limine and gets stricken after the objection is made. Next question. So what are the typical motions in limine? Typical motions in limine will address such issues as gruesome photographs of a crime scene or gruesome photographs from a medical examiner's office or the coroner's office. Other motions in limine handle issues such as impeachment of the defendant or witnesses with prior felony convictions or moral turpitude misconduct. If you are the defense counsel, for example, you'll file a motion in limine asking the court to exclude your client's prior felony conviction as perhaps too prejudi prejudicial or old so that the jury shouldn't be able, shouldn't be permitted to consider it uh, in its case. Your case may also involve the admissibility of uncharged acts, uncharged bad acts that the prosecution may seek to introduce at trial against the defendant or either side, uncharged acts of a witness. If it's a sexual assault case, perhaps the victim's prior sexual con uh, conduct is an issue. And finally, in a criminal action, the court must always hear and consider any admission or confession of a defendant outside of the presence of the jury, and it must be a hearing outside of the presence of the jury. There you would seek, you would cite evidence code 402B. Examples of this would include uh, a confession or admission that uh, is in violation of Miranda, for example. So as you can see, because these evidentiary issues are sensitive by nature, they may have a tremendous prejudicial effect if they are not ruled upon before uh, you're actually in your jury selection or bef before you're actually giving your opening statement. It should be made before jury selection because, for example, if the court and referring to the, the prior felony conviction that I was talking about earlier, if the court were to determine that your client's prior felony conviction is going to be admitted at trial if he or she is going to testify, that might be something you may want to ask the jury during voir dire. And that will impact the type, perhaps, of jury, uh, your jury selection and the type of jurors you may want to hear the case. So it may also, for example, uh, be very relevant in your opening statement, if the court were going to admit 
what um, one might think are very gruesome or uh, very shocking uh, photographs of a crime scene, that's something you might not want, might want to talk about not only in your opening statement, but also, excuse me, not only in your voir dire, but also in the opening statement to eliminate the shock effect before those photographs are actually admitted at trial in front of the jury so the jury already knows that in fact they're going to be looking at some very terrible photographs. Now, motions in limine are tentative, and that means they're not binding on the trial court. The trial judge can always change his or her mind depending upon what happens at the trial, because remember, trial is a very fluid process. Things are changing. It's dynamic. How you think the evidence is going to come in might not come in as you anticipated. So, if the evidence at trial changes, and that change of evidence affects the court's earlier ruling on your motion in limine, the counsel should ask to approach and ask the court to revisit its prior ruling. For example, take, that exa take the example of the prior felony conviction. Let's say the judge rules that the prior felony conviction of your client, if you're the defense lawyer, is not going to come in unless the defendant opens the door and suggests that he has good character. Your client testifies, and during his examination, somehow it comes out that he says he's never been arrested or is somehow of a, of a person of good moral character. At that point, counsel for the prosecutor, prosecution is likely going to ask the court if he, she can approach and revisit the issue of whether or not the prior felony conviction should be admitted now for impeachment purposes because the defendant has opened the door. So, remember, if the climate changes, if something changes in the evidence, you can always revisit and should revisit at the time of trial. Now, will your objections be preserved on appeal if your motion in limine is denied by the trial judge? Well, the criminal pr practitioner particularly must always preserve his or her record for appeal in the event of a conviction. Now, this means you must, must remember to renew your objection at the time the evidence is going to be admitted or is admitted at trial. There is an exception to this, and this is the exception. Three criteria have to be met. One, you have stated a specific legal ground for your objection. For example, the gruesome photographs, very prejudicial, irrelevant. Uh, 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 should it be not admitted, Your Honor, because it will inflame the jury and have no, no particular relevance uh, to the ultimate issue of fact that the jury must decide. Secondly, your objection must be directed to a particular type of evidence, the photographs. And thirdly, of course, it has to be timely made. I suggest, though, when in doubt, make your objection at the time the evidence, the affected evidence, is going to be admitted. Now, the other uh, suggestion I would have, and this is typically what we do at the time of trial, is the parties agree to stipulate. And the court will generally agree that the objection will have been deemed to be made at the time the effect of e affected evidence is being introduced. Therefore, you will not have to reiterate your objection in front of the jury, and you will have preserved your appeal, your record on appeal. You know, here we've really just touched upon only one part of the trial process, and that component dealing with emotions and limine. And of course, there are going to be several other motions that you will have filed before you get to that part in your case, where you do, in fact, address the affected and sensitive evidentiary issues that you want to handle outside the presence of the jury and uh, hopefully before um, you have to pick that jury and give your opening statement. But those other types of motions will often include bail reductions or motions to have your client released on his own or her own recognizance if he or she is in custody. They may well include also a discovery motions if discovery hasn't been made in a timely fashion or motions to dismiss if, for example, evidence that uh, may have impacted your case favorably has been destroyed or lost. Speedy trial motions. So there are several other types of motions, obviously, that you're going to consider and file before you get to that point where you are filing your motions in limine. In the end, I will say that you will have increased your chances of winning before you begin your trial. 
if you know your evidence and you litigate those sensitive evidentiary matters before your case goes to trial. Good luck, and I bet, wish you a remarkable career. Thank you.